at the time when I was in another bedroom, he used to ask to naita haki yake. He used to ask for it with a text message. And I would go to his bedroom, give him what is due to him, and then just when we are finishing, as the issue is over, he would kick me out of the bedroom. And then I did not know how much that issue or that thing affected me as a woman. I didn't know. But I'm telling you, it worked, it almost destroyed the woman God created me to be. My womanhood. In fact, one of the places where my healing began is the day I told myself, Susan, why there? Your husband hates you. He hates you. That day I cried, but that's where my healing began. He hates you. He doesn't like you disgust your husband. Hello and welcome back to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, if you are just joining us, then you might want to go back to our channel and watch part one of this conversation because there was a lot that Susan talked about. So make sure that you first go watch part one so that you can join us for part two so that you are able to comprehend the content of today's conversation. Susan, karibu. Okay. Tena. Thank si, hata tujabadilisha nguo za part two. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we, uh, ha, so uh, before we took a break, mm. you told us now you finally left. Yes. You even got a katu bedroom yeah. and you said today is the day yeah. I am leaving. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Okay, so on that day I said um, he was categorical, you have to leave. Yes. I called the transporter and uh, why I say I don't know how that day happened. Is, remember I was this very weak lady, very weak, somebody who had never, sp I had never talked back, I had never spoken out to him, mm -hmm. maybe to other people, mm -hmm. but I had never faced him yeah. and, and, and had the courage to do any, any specific action mm -hmm. or actual action. Mm -hmm. And so I, when, the, when the truck came, uh, we had a push and pull of the children in the kitchen. So he would pull the child's hand, I pull back. I pull like that. Remember, they are three, they are still kind of small. They mm. are small. Mm. Finally, and I think, I guess, when a victim is no longer a victim and they stand up and become strong, the aggressor or the abuser gets confused. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. And so after some time of that push and pull, mm -hmm he just walked away and left. Wow, he was like, Uyu ni nani? Yes, who, who is, is this woman? Who is this woman? I don't know her. Yeah. So what I did, by God's grace, that time I had a car, I took my kids, uh, put them in the car, I just lowered the, the, the windows of the car, just enough for them to breathe. Put with a big, remember I had a car baby, a small one. It, it was still small, it was mm. under two years. Mm -hmm. Put, uh, it was about yeah, one, yeah, one, not even one and a half. Mm. Put them in the car, put diapers. I told them, I put her even a car bucket. You want to urinate, you urinate inside there. With her big milk, sugar, what, bananas. I just told them and I locked the, all the doors of the car and I put the key in my pocket. So I knew that if these kids are to be taken from me, they have to carry the whole car or break into the car. You know, in my mind, I'm telling myself, you can't break into a car. Mm, 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 <laughs> you know, you know how your mind mm, is. Mm. That's the best you can do yes, then. Yeah. The reason, of course, why I was doing that is because, you know, I'm a lawyer. So I knew if I leave my kids behind, I will never see them again. That's one I knew. Because, Lynn, allow me to say something that I maybe didn't say in the beginning. Please go Now, on. because we are talking about, now we've come to the issue of children. Mm. When I just got married, very early on, my uh, ex-husband's aunties, or, you know, let me call them aunties, one day they whispered to me in my ear, and that time I don't even think I had, go, I had given birth, mm. and they told me, you know, in our culture, children belong to us. 
So if for any given reason you can't stay with our son and you have given birth to a child, you leave the child here. And so I knew this battle of children, it's not a joke. Remember, this is still somebody who repeated it himself and told me when the baby was six months, go and leave mm -hmm. your children. In fact, I was to also leave the big boy. Yes. I didn't mention why I was to leave him. Let me say it now. It is because we had changed his name and given him a name from now my ex's side. And so that was like a traditional adoption. Once a naming is done, it cannot be undone because now the next child that comes takes another name, let's say from the other, like yes. my side of the family. Yes. So you cannot undo. I didn't know. So now he was a father. He was his father and he was, he was from there now because he has their name. In, and in fact, that naming thing and what, it was a ceremony very early in my marriage. And people came from the village and I was very excited. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know. I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, when you hear ceremony in African culture, ask yourself why it's been done. And five, ten years from the time you're doing it mm -hmm. then, will it, will it serve you well? Or you're just engaging in things because you're being told engage. It's fun. It's mm -hmm. an event. It's mm -hmm. a party. Mm -hmm. Don't just do anything. Yes. Ask questions. And so this was his son. And I've given birth to another one and another one. So that is why I locked them in the car. <laughs> And then now, let me say, Lynn, people say where we come from, we sweep the house. Lynn, I swept the house. And you know why? Nailikwa <laughs> Mchana. <laughs> yes. I had bought 90% of the items in that house. Now we are leaving this behind. I had bought 90%. 90%. Because if somebody would say, if you don't change this sofa set, I'll get another woman to move in here and she's going to get me very good furniture in this house. Every, th almost, apart from wedding gifts, which what I did, I count, I sp we, remember we had a huge wedding. Our wedding had four pickups full of gifts. So what I did, I just split. Especially the things that had come from his side. I, I knew a few of them, mm. I left them behind. What belonged to you? I picked you picked. the kids, yeah. for the kids, mm. I picked. And so, uh, during that time, my father-in-law came, he's now passed on. Mm. And uh, I don't even know how I faced him. <laughs> he told me what is going on. I told him I'm leaving. Why I'm saying these things is because don't always think you'll be what you were yesterday. Things change. And the weak person you were yesterday, some th God can do something in you within an hour, within a night, and you change. This is somebody I feared. How I told him I'm leaving. And how he watched me pack the things from his aunt's house and leave. I don't know how I managed that day. Honestly, it was by God's grace. My parents were, my, my mom was called. I remember a sister, they came. They witnessed what was going on. They left. Because I was like a lioness. You know, I was unstoppable that day. You could not talk to me. How I got there, it's only God. I cannot attribute it to any physical mm. strength mm. I had in me then. Mm. I left. By the way, when I first left, I had filed a children's case. Then after I went back to, to the marriage, mm. I withdrew it. Oh. <laughs> so when now I left, I ran again back to the children's court. I told the court, look, I've left again. And I urgently need protection because the messages were endless. I know where you are. I'm going to find you. You're dead. A, B, C, D. Those children are mine. You can never go anywhere with them. This and the other. I withstood that. And so we entered into the children's court. And remember, I am a children's court practitioner. And, so, and maybe at this point, we also need to mention he's also an advocate yes, of the High Court. Yes. So, ni lawyers were willing. Ni lawyers were willing. To kwenye tutafikishana. Yes. Hey. So, I had a friend of mine. She's still a very close friend of mm -hmm, mine. Mm -hmm. uh, helped me with my case. And uh, he got a lawyer. We met in court. And uh, the worst thing happened to me, Lynn, because... Uh, at that time, remember, I was not that mature in also practice. Yes. And so we did w what we could with my friend because I would prepare the papers, what would help one another. 
I didn't have finances. Remember, I've come out of a house, started paying rent yeah. and paying all the other bills I used to pay. And, and also I am you can't also, go to your parents. I can't go to my parents and ask home. for money. I can't go and ask for help. They are insisting go back. And so there is no help from home. I'm on my own. I'm having three kids. There is a house help here. There is so much confusion. I have to shower every day and go to the office and attend to clients. They don't know what is happening in my house or in my life. Because I've never really taken, the only break I took in practice was when I worked in Alabastro. But I've never taken a break at because Ili Chapuajana or because I, even where we slept, we, we didn't have enough to eat. I were always showed up in my office. And so in the children's court is where all hell broke loose. And why I say all hell broke loose is because my case, Lynn, in my view, is one of the worst. The judgment I got, got then, which still persists 10 years later, is one of the worst. I have seen many cases, I handle many cases, I've never seen one like mine. Because what happened is that when we started the case, my baby was one and a half years. And the others were still small. Mm -hmm. And there's a common thing we say under the law, and that in, in, you know, in children's legal practice, we, their children were called children of tender years. They are young. Lean, my, they finally, in fact, in for the case, I don't even, it didn't take so long. Mm. But one of the things I remember the magistrate who handled my case saying when he was giving his the verdict, the verdict or the judgment mm. is he said, Madam, you have to stop breastfeeding. I have never had a magistrate tell a mother to stop breastfeeding. I was the first one. Maybe there are others because I don't know all the mm. cases that have ever mm. been handled. Mm. But I'm talking about my own case. You have to stop breastfeeding because this boy has to live in your house and the father's house. Remember, even when I did my application, in my mind, I never had the idea that this father should never see his children. What I just wanted was the opportunity to at least nurture them when they are that small, be given more time. Remember, it's not that I willingly left my home or that I had another plan. I have found myself outside marriage and I have children. And this is a child in diapers who is still breastfeeding. Hajaongea. He has not talked. Mm. And so I was told he must live in two homes. The structure was given 50-50. So to date, what happens is that my children, for half the time, they're in my house. The other half of the time, they're in the other house, his house. Every other weekend, my children move from house to house. Even today? Today, 10, ten years, years later. later. 10 years later. In the holiday, we split the holiday in half. Mm -hmm. So when we had this long holiday of November, December, I would not see my children for a full month. And the way it would be, as it was even then, no communication. So, for example, this past Christmas, I, what I do with my kids and we learned over the years, if I know it's not my Christmas and my New Year, we do our things before. I tell them Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, I love you, God bless you, I pray over them. Yes. Bye. Did you not petition this verdict? Imagine at that time I didn't. Wow, Lynn, I was gone. No energy. I had friends around me who even who are now in the judiciary who would tell me, please, please, this is wrong. Can you go to the court and say, these children are too small. Even for purposes of school, how can children be going through school in two homes? Because generally what I've seen, and it's, I'm not, as I'm saying, this video will be watched by lawyers and all sorts of people. But generally what I've seen in the children's court is they give a father alternate weekends during the school term. And then the holiday is split in half. That is the common meaning yes. that is given, especially yeah. when children are young. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when you find that a child is breastfeeding, what will happen until they stop breastfeeding is what we call supervised uh, access, yes. meaning I have to be there so that Akai Kidogo na Babayake and I, don't, I, don't I breastfeed, I give him back. Yes. So we are all like, if it's a hotel or what, we're in the same vicinity. So this is 50 50, and if your baby who is one and a half yes. is with the dad, yes. you cannot even breastfeed no. this. That happens in our country? It happened to me. It happened to me, Lynn. 
And I'm telling you, Lynn, the first day I released these children, the first day, now you know I'm seasoned. I'm like, you can never get used to it. But the first day when I released that baby, I didn't think I would live till morning. I didn't know how. How? How do you survive till morning? How? How do you sleep that night? You can't talk to the child. You can't have a, an update. What is the child doing? Did they sleep? What have they eaten? What is happening? How are the other bigger kids? How are they faring? It was devastating. When you told them this, when you gave them this news, when you told them, yeah. when you sat your yeah, kids down, down, those who could understand, yeah. and you told them this is what is happening, yeah. what was their response? I remember those early days, we, children get confused. And so going to their father would be tears. Leaving him again would be tears. You know, it's so devastating for yes, children. Yes. Because to be honest, my children love their father. They do. And I'm not saying that this man does not love his children. He does. But what I'm trying to say is that for kids, it has been such a, an uphill task. Yes. It has been in the Lima, you're walking up a mountain that Kwanza a hill or a mountain that never ends. Mm, mm. That is how it has been for my children. Mm. Because these are kids who have different wardrobes, they go to different churches, they have different diets, they have different and of course this is common yes. for children who whose parents are co parenting. Mm. But remember this one started when they were too young. Too young. And then also, the frequency of the movement was too much for mm. children of their age. Mm. That's why you'll find there is a longer period given, maybe be like two weeks before again they, they, go back. they go. In fact, there are pl places where I've seen maybe he's given once a month, maybe a father who travels. Yes. Once a month. So yeah. that at least a whole month they have stayed with their mother. And at this point where you are releasing your kids, yeah. where are they going to? Is he with another person already? By then he had a, a house help. Mm -hmm. who I, I, seem to be, I seem to remember my mom had looked for that lady. She was a mature lady. Mm. She helped a lot because at least her, she, I could call her secretly. And so why I was calling her is yeah. not that even I... It's just to hear how is the child. Mm. And then we did potty training with her because this is a child who went in diapers. So how did you manage to get him in the potty when you were with him? This is what I told him. When he comes back to me, I reinforce, I do the same mm. language. Mm. Which words are you hear, hearing him saying? And let me tell you, Lynn, this one, for me to come out and share this story, even my clients don't know. I handle their cases well. Most of them, you know, in a children's case, you can never get a hundred percent win. Yes. Because maybe either person wants a children for themselves. Mm. But I've tried my best in over the years to help my clients. But for me, I did not help myself. <laughs> yeah. And so it's been 10 years. Um, my, he ended up remarrying. By that time, he had not remarried. And so the journey of having a stepmother began. And uh, it's not been easy for them. And I, you know, I may look like that bitter woman who is talking about my ex's wife. I'm not talking to her about her or mentioning her as his wife. I have no business with that. But it's not easy for children to have a step parent. And then why I talk about this story of mine is because I did not willingly enter a marriage and leave. This is a man who had this idea in mind that he would get a child and then move on with mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So I found myself in the middle of somebody's life plan. Yes. Get a child with this lady and then move on. So he got a child with me or children with me and then has moved on to another woman who is suitable for him. Mm. In the meantime, my kids are caught up in between. And so I've tried to train them how to live with her, how to, the first time they called her mom, <laughs> uh. because they were told you must call her mom. The first time now they came and told me, mom said, 
we lean guy boy hey there are the times when as a woman you hold yourself like this and you cry when did your children get another mother what did i do to deserve this i have honestly for me lean now to be serving god and not asking god any question it has taken the hand of god himself because there are things you go on that happen to you in life and you begin to question is god really there does he love me does he care for me why am i going through? why do i why me mm. what did i do for me to deserve to get mm. to where i am now mm -hmm. ni wapi nilimkosea what did i do to god what did my kids do to god for them to go through some of the things they have gone through mm. and so early last year my kids told me mom we can't go back there anymore for now we need a break and so i went back to court again after years almost 10 years did big applications went back now I was representing myself remember i've become yes. stronger yeah and you have uh, you have this yes. skill and set then the, now yeah the kids are also big yes because there was what they wanted they wanted a break mm. and there is what they wanted to say about the situation as they live with their father and mm. a stepmother mm. i put everything down they were interviewed by a children's officer and uh, lean once again <laughs> once again i d i a lawyer did not get justice because the magistrate said he has not found anything that i have said of importance and one of the things i requested is for him to interview my children and that is a very normal in the children's court remember it is a children's court he said he does not want to hear from them personally mm, come on he I'm telling you Lynn I this is happening to a lawyer yes. which makes me I've dealt with a lot of cases here yeah. and I watch sometimes my guests yeah. tell me yeah. what the law did yeah. to them yeah. and now I'm like if a lawyer yeah. can also go through that yeah. in whose hands are we safe <laughs> in God's hands in God's <laughs> in God's hands in yeah. God's hands yeah. yeah that's where we are safe yeah so he did your kids did not were not because i was saying let's say i'm I'm, I'm the one who has done the application i'm biased let's say i'm biased their father is biased this is a child who is 14 and 11 these are children who are they are sober they they are mature enough and they to have talk observed. they have observed they are the ones going through it listen to them and make your own decision he said i don't want to hear my application was dismissed I was told go back to the order. So you've been having it for 10 years. I'm not making any changes. My children cried and they said, "Mom, why what 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 is what is it about us? What is it about us mm. that our story is like this? Why why us?" Now they start, the question I asked myself they started asking themselves that. We have now calmed down. They are back to the court order, as it was, because one of the things I think disturbs them, and I don't know if it disturbs other children like mine, is that they have no choice in this matter. There is a court order, there is a court order. You and have to obey it. And their voice does not count. It doesn't count. Because, by the way, if there is a function on my side and they are on the other side, they cannot attend. If there is a function on, he, on, on his side and they are with me, they cannot attend. So they have no, they are children who are under authority of a court order and there is no option. And that I think is what got to them also. And they felt, why don't we be allowed to, I, well, number one, be heard? Because actually what I've seen like the magistrates in the children's court do a lot, they do a lot of counseling. They cancel children and they cancel the mm. parents. Mm. They may not even change the order, mm. but they just make the child understand yes. this is the reason why this order is mm, like this mm. or why I'm giving this mm, order. Mm. They also talk to parents and they tell them, please sober up and co-parent in peace. Did, were you, did your kids receive any counseling? Over the years, no. Maybe they've received from pastors, from pastors teachers. teachers. Teachers have really helped me. But not from the court? Not from the court. And that is one of the things I've seen 
over all these years, children's magistrates do it every day. They cancel. And it calms people down because remember they are doing a very hard job. As I told you, there is no ideal mm. court order mm. or judgment. Mm. And so that's my story, Lynn. That's where we are. Yeah. The big boy is now 21. At least. At least he's out he's of it. He's out. But for Has him, he gone back? No, he, he doesn't go there. Uh, remember now, these are both his step parents. Uh, so but then it must be painful for him because yeah. this is someone he has known for almost for 20 years. Yes. And then also remember that he has to be separated from his brothers. When his brothers go on the other side, there is no communication. So it has taken a lot from him. Yeah. He's a rather calm person by nature. But, uh, and then they are very close. Remember this was like, ended up being like their father. Mm. Because there is some age gap. Mm. So imagine your brothers are somewhere, you can't talk to them, mm. you can't greet them, mm. you can't tell them Merry Christmas, nothing. There is no communication. So um, one of the things I'd like to say, Lynn, that I've observed from my life story is that we need to be very cautious about what we do. Mm. And uh, you may say, I want this. But have you thought about what effect it has on the people around you? Mm. I want to say now what, what I have observed. Yes. My ex-husband is living the life he always desired. He has children, he has a, his ideal wife, and he's enjoying life, isn't it? Wait, talk, talk to me about him remarrying. He did a wedding. He did a huge wedding. Interestingly enough, the color scheme I seem to remember was the same. <laughs> I was sent photos. And uh, the, the same red in my wedding was in the second wedding, his second marriage. Uh, I saw some of the pastors in, who are in my wedding, in his, in his wedding. Guests, of course, is, they are his relatives, they were the same. So it was interesting. I think the wedding didn't bother me much. Remember, this is somebody I never got even to bond with, yes. to get attached you to. You were not in love. I was not in love, mm. and even because you can grow in love, I hear. Yes. You can. You can. Mm. I never got to grow. Remember, it became a war zone. <laughs> so I never got to, to feel any love Yes. in that marriage. Yeah. And so, uh, so that issue of him remarrying never bothered mm. me. Th you, know, uh, you know, as I said, even with him and the wife, it does not bother yeah, me at all. Yeah, but then the issue of, of, the, of the kids, kids, kids getting to call her, Mom. that would bother me. Yes. That would bother and me. And I think when I saw that, they never, my kids never told me. But they were actually page boys yes. in the wedding. I cried. That one I cried and I don't know. I always ask myself, Susan, why were you crying about that issue? But it hurt me. And then also to see my big son being a page boy or whatever in the, a second wedding for his parents. I really, I don't know if it was shame or regrets or what. But that's the only thing that mm. bothered me about mm. that issue. Mm. And so... I would say that um, he's, uh, living, his he's best living his best life. He's enjoying Kabisa. It's, everything is good. But when I look at my kids, one of the things I've seen my children do in my home where I stay now, they, it's an estate. Hmm. My children never play with children outside. They don't. Because one of the things that my children hate to be asked is where were you last weekend? They hate that question. So when they're in my place, they lock themselves in the house. Mm. So they have not had the normal childhood other children have. In church is another place where I see they just withdraw like this. Why? Because these are children who go to two churches. Also when they are with you? They yeah. go to my church. Oh, when no. they're on the other side, they go, go to, to the to other church. church. And so at least let me say what I've seen in my church, they close. So you see other children playing, playing what? But them, remember there are periods they will not be seen in church for a month. So they don't want that question of yeah. where were you? Mm. We mm. had this function, what? We had a children's program, why didn't you come? So in school is the only place where I've seen them make friends easily because you see they are there. Yeah, it's a constant. It's a constant. But in terms of them mixing now with, with people who would ask them questions, they don't do mm. it. So that has been the effect on my children. I think for me as a, as a woman, um, why it has taken the hand of God? 
because Lynn, I didn't mention to you that uh, now we can touch on a few things. Let's do it. Yes, mm -hmm. that at the time when I was in another bedroom, he used to ask to naita haki ake. He used to ask for it with a text message. And I would go to his bedroom, give him what is due to him, and then just when we are finishing, as the issue is over, he would kick me out of the bedroom. And then I did not know how much that issue or that thing affected me as a woman. I didn't know. But I'm telling you, it worked, it almost destroyed the woman God created me to be. My womanhood, my sexuality as a woman, it's almost devastating. Let me tell you, honestly, and I'm saying this with respecting every kind of, every person's yeah. life and life decision. If you didn't, do not know God, there are things you cannot be able to sort out or get over in your life. Sitting with a counselor and I don't know doing what or, or meditation, it can't help you. Mm, it, that, I'm talking of my personal view. Yes. Because honestly, like that particular one. He made you feel worthless. Yes, because you know I used to go mm. and, and give him his rights. Mm. It's because I thought we would reconcile. I thought tonight, see it's he's called me, is the day. Everything will be okay. Wow. When we just finish like this, we are done. Get out of this bedroom now. God. And I would still go back and go back. And so I'm telling you, I'm still getting well. Mm. I'm still healing, but I've come a long, long way. And for me to be sitting here, Lynn, telling you this story, and I'm still together, I'm still working, I'm still serving God, I'm still a mother, it has taken the hand of God. It has nothing to do with my profession. It has nothing to do with where I came from. Mm. And so the other thing I wanted to say is something about my family. As much as I would say they have never supported me, uh, one of the things I would say is that I think when you make a life decision, for example, I made a life decision and got married, there is the way your parents feel and there is a way they are viewed in the society. Mm -hmm. And so when that marriage breaks, it also breaks them and breaks the person they are in the inside yes, yes. and their image. Yes. And I think that is one of the things that really affected my parents mm -hmm. because they did not know how to tell the guests who they invited to my wedding that our daughter is no longer in marriage. Because to them, and, and, and I've seen this with a lot of African uh, parents, no offense, yeah. marriage is a big deal. Yeah. Our daughter is getting married. Yeah. So it's more of the perception of marriage yeah. rather than is my daughter happy yes. or is my son happy yes. in that in marriage. marriage yeah. And so that is where they, I think they got caught up. And uh, to be honest, our relationship has never really recovered. Mm -hmm. And so... As I lost my marriage, I lost friends. And family. I lost family. By the way, one of the things he did is that as the marriage ended or was ending, yeah. these people he used to tell me not to pick their call, my parents now, because he doesn't like my voice. He then became very close to them. Very close. In fact, those years when I was fighting for the children, what, 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 the early years, they would talk, talk to my sisters very close to them. And these are people who will tell me, you come from a useless family, this, the other, many things. People from your tribe are all thieves. You know, you know, taught utter disrespect. But when the marriage ended, and I think it was maybe a tactic I've never understood. Maybe yes. he didn't know how the children's case would end. Mm. So he was hoping they would convince me to go back so that he doesn't lose the kid. You know, mm. many things, I don't mm. know what informed. And a lot of narcissistic traits. Yes, Let's course. just call it yes. as it is. Yes. A lot of narcissistic traits, traits. here. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know when people sometimes do you wrong, yeah. 
and they know they've done you wrong, yeah. what they want to do is become friends with your circle. Yes. So that even when you go and uh -huh. tell the close people in your circle yeah. that this person is doing this and this to me, yeah. the circle looks at you and be like, no, mm. this is such a good guy. He cannot. He, can't. he cannot. Yeah. 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 Wow. So he became very close to them. Mm. And so... So to everyone, he's a saint. Ah, and I, you are the one who... Yes. Una uh, yeah. I'm the one who did not know how to manage a, you a, a, a good man and a good marriage. That's what people see from the outside. And so for me, I remember uh, interesting things. There is a time my small son asked him, why did you beat my mother? And... Uh, he never answered and so my small son said you know when i'm big you'll answer me and so what i did with my kids when i had that incident yeah, yes. i told them that one day i would like you to call a baraza call a meeting call your father call me and call people and ask him why in my presence mm. what did our mother do mm. lina was not perfect in marriage but i know my former in-laws will also watch this video they know how much I loved them. I am to date never able to mention my mother-in-law because? because of how I loved her. Okay. I loved that woman. And when she was almost to go, I took care of her. I did. And anybody can question me about many things, but that woman, I cared for her. I would do what I can feed her, and it was not for sure. I loved her genuinely as my mother, not as a mother-in-law. And she loved you? And she loved me. Remember, I was her first daughter-in-law. Yes. So I was, I, I was close to, the, I mean, the day I buried that woman, I, I in fact, I was a few months pregnant then. Ah, uh, that was the, one of the hardest days of my life because I loved that lady. And I did what I could as in, in my capacity then for my in-laws yes. and to stay well with them, to mm. respect them, mm. to help them to mm. be in their functions. Mm. I completely forgot where I had come from, you know, and I became part of them yeah. to the best of my mm -hmm. ability. Mm. Because the only thing we are able to do, Lynn, is the best with what we have then of who, or who we are then, mm. you know. Mm. So I don't know. I did my best. It and so not. when I sit back, I never have regrets as regards a marriage. Maybe I have regrets as regards marrying somebody who, getting married to somebody who didn't want to marry me. But as to how I conducted myself as a wife, I have no regrets. I have none. In mm -hmm. fact, just to tell you is that when I filed my divorce, he did not respond. And legally, what does that mean? It means he has nothing to say. It he means what it I done. Yes, it means what I said is true. No response. In fact, when the magistrate was issuing my, de my divorce decree, he said, you know, this is my brother. Had he come and told me that, you know, uh, you know, give me some time, I work on this marriage with my wife, I would never have issued you with the divorce. But because he has not come, he has not said what you have said is a lie, I issued the divorce. Mm. So I did my part, yeah. and, and I think one of the things that it has been the hardest is that question I was I was asking myself is what did I do to deserve this because there are things I've done even professionally there are, there are mistakes I've made and there are mistakes I can even mm. acknowledge them yes. now I'm making yeah. them right yeah there are mistakes I've made in my profession mm. as a human being mm. and I know lean here in Makosa and I apologize and I try to make amends yeah but Honestly, as regards my marriage, I cannot pinpoint the thing that I did for me to get to where I got to. Mm. And so I think that's what devastates people more, is that you can't say, this is what I, I'm an Ilihanya, or mm. I had a mm. boyfriend, or I was I'm flirting with someone, mm. I was uh, rude, Zuri. I was this, I was cruel, I yeah. was cruel. So there's my part in this thing and so for me to be able to get to a place why where i am now and that number one is self-acceptance mm. i had to 
In fact, one of the places where my healing began is the day I told myself, Susan, why there? Your husband hates you. He hates you. That day I cried, but that's where my healing began. He hates you. He doesn't like you disgust your husband. Acceptance. You tell you, because when you live in denial, that's what destroys you. But when you accept and you say, you know, this is the reality. This is the reality. He hates me. My husband hates me. He can't stand me. And so, by the way, Lina, I, I went for classes. In fact, there is a time I remember I went for a class for pole dancing. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I tried. Eh. I tried. Yes. Okay, Lina, I tried. Yes, because we, because you yeah. want to start now uh, catering to the woman yes. in you. Yes, you want to see what, to what see. is the problem. Oh, <laughs> guy, guy, oh, yeah, guy. And I remember there's, there are women I shared with this story <laughs> that when I went for the class, <laughs> For pole dancing, <laughs> they told us since you don't have a pole in the house, mm. use a chair. Mm. And so I thought, let me spice it up. And I even wore some few leather items. Yes. I'm not very slim. So there are some clothings and some movements. You are gorgeous. That are not very good for me. Yes. <laughs> but you can force up on that. Yeah. He slept. <laughs> <laughs> he slept. Sorry. He slept. Hey, after you've been doing your thing. He slept. He slept. He slept. <laughs> Very well till morning. So what I did, <laughs> I just removed my, re we call it regalia. <laughs> I calmed down. Oh, my night's down. <gasps> oh, Kalala. He slept. Kai, boy. Lina, I tried. <laughs> it's not your eye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tried. Yes. And why I'm saying these things is because women, we try. Mm. We try. Mm -hmm. But what if your effort is not enough? And what if he's honestly not yes, he's in not love with you? Yeah, not and he's not interested. Yes. So, accept. Kai. Accept. From there, after acceptance, I ran back to God. Because honestly, through the marriage and what, I looked like a Christian. Mm. But I was not. Mm. Fully. My heart was not sold out. Why? Because I was very annoyed with God. I was suicidal. I was annoyed with him. I had a lot of b uh, bitterness and forgiveness with the people around me, with family. Mm. And so I had to go back to God and reconcile myself back to him. I had to also analyze myself and look what are the mistakes I made. They are there here, small, small things. All of us make mistakes, but nothing major, but mm. just those things of what, did I, what could I have done mm. better. Mm. I'm not saying I was perfect in but. marriage, but you know there are those small, small things. Maybe I should have, I should have uh, said more. Maybe I should have. I don't know. I try to think what I should have done. Mm -hmm. I can't really tell. But because we are not perfect, I had to also ask God to forgive me. And then from there, I had to also do a lot with my kids in terms of telling them, yeah. you know, uh, accept this the situation. This is how it is. Love yourself. Don't behave in a way that will show where you're coming from. You have your own life to live. Have you found yourself telling your kids, love your father? Yeah, I have to. Mm. At least, I mean, because loving him is, is normal. Mm. Na respect. Even for the stepmother. I told them, she's a woman in authority over you. So I've had to have those conversations with my yes. children. Yeah. Um, I've had to be brave in school whenever children, ch my children change class, I go to the new teacher, tell them these children are under court order. I usually visit them in school. Those periods I'm not with them. Yeah. I go to school. Yeah. I sit with them over lunch time. It's also getting to be embarrassing maybe for them or something. Not really embarrassing, but it gets to them. You to get, remember it's, it's them. 10 mm. years of your, the, your mother mm. appearing in school mm. when other parents are not in school. Yeah. So just to tell them, they love it, they love to see me, but, but it's still uncomfortable, mm, you know. Mm. And uh, at least I get to see them, pray for them. Yeah. Um, so those are some of the things I've done. Mm. And so why I'm saying all these things is because in your situation, there are things you can do. Don't just sit back, get resigned and say, I'm giving up on life. 
I'm giving up on my situation. There are things you can do. Become creative with the situation you're in. You become creative yes. with the situation you're yes. in. Yes. And see how you can maneuver around yes. it. Not out of malice, but out of the good of what mm. you need to do and mm. maybe for your kids. Mm. And then I would say that why I've come out to share also my story is because um, when will a person of my caliber ever come out if I don't come out? If I don't come out and say my story that I've made mistakes, that I've, I, 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 have, I have failed, yeah. or rather I was in a situation that did not work out, I was in a marriage that broke, I have maybe never been the best mother. You know, in my, maybe as I was saying, when I was in that marriage, I, I didn't defend my big son. You know, if I never come out and say there are places where I've made mistakes, mm -hmm. And we all sit, lean, and put makeup, appear in courtrooms, appear wherever we are, and seem like we are okay. Yeah. Then we will not heal. Mm. And also our stories will never be heard. Mm -hmm. Because these stories must be heard. Yes. Why? Because when you keep silent, mm. then the wrong continues. Silence is a killer. Mm. But when you speak out on something, mm then it, 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 um, it changes the environment. Yes. And it changes that, you know, secrets have a strong hold on us. Yes, yes. But when you come out with your story and you break the silence, mm. then you're able even for yourself to heal, for also people to know the truth. Yeah. And then from there, you move on with life. Yes, yeah. you move on with life. Mm. What are you... First, before I even ask you what you are proud of, yeah. as a mom, as a woman, you yeah. know you are beautiful. Yeah. Now you know. Now I know. You know your <laughs> voice is absolutely beautiful. I thank God you know for even that. the gap in your teeth yes. is beautiful. Yes. You know everything about you yeah. is beautiful. And yes, now yes. I know. Now you know. Yes. Now you know. Yeah. Why was it even important for you yeah. to start counseling, to start sitting with professionals, mm. to even go to God and be like, I am defeated. Yeah. Take care of me. Yeah. Mm. I think because I went, I got to the, to the end of my strength. I get, got to the end of my knowledge the end of my profession, I reached the end. Yes. You know, I reached the end. And so I had to now retreat and see where will I get help. And honestly, the only help I have ever gotten is from God. The real help, the real forgiveness, the real acceptance was from God. So mm. I, needed to, I needed to go back and now uh, tell myself I can't handle this on my own. I can't. You can't. I can't. You can't. Mm. I love that. Mm. What are you more proud of right now? Wow. I'm very proud of, I was looking at the photos of my children. Yes. <laughs> How they have grown, you know, where we are coming from and uh, who they are now. And these are children who hold their own. They are, they are growing well. They are confident. Uh, my son recently acted in a play. He was a main actor. Oh, wow. And I told uh, people in church, people don't know who that boy is. That boy who acted, they don't know. He doesn't know how to live in one house. He doesn't know what it looks like to live in one home. Yet he was the main actor in a play, in a play for two hours. And he's that confident. And I gave God all the glory because it can only be God mm. who makes people become like mm, that because mm. these are children who yeah. at some point you see like they're in a shell yes but then all of a sudden they get strength from god and they become okay yeah. so i thank god for how far they've come as a mother i'm proud mm -hmm. and uh it has not been my abilities it has been god helping me good uh that i'm still a lawyer still mm. running a law firm mm -hmm. with all the issues yes with the mistakes with everything with all the weakness because clients would come to my office i attend to them then i close my door and really wail then wash up and see the next client mm. that mm. i'm still at it mm. one of the things that has helped some of my clients is when they hear a few bits of my story yes and i tell them if you have found me in my office today mm. you'll make it good you'll make if you found me here mm. 
you're not going to die because a lot of my clients are suicidal yeah. like me yeah. how i was yeah so i tell them please just don't kill yourself yes. today yes give me one man yeah so i do a lot of counseling mm. and i've seen my clients recover well i always tell them when we finish by the time we finish this case mm -hmm. i'll not only get you the best ruling i can i will make sure that the person you are you're better and stronger at the end. I love end. that. It's I not only that. about legal fees or what, yes. but you will come out a as better a better person. person and a stronger person yes. and a person with hope. With hope. Yeah. I want you to look at that camera. And first, do you have any message to your ex? Uh, no. No. <laughs> not good. Uh, I want you to look <laughs> at that camera yeah. and speak to your children. Yeah. Yes. Good. So for my sons, um, I love you. And uh, I always tell you that you should always remember God loves you more than I love you. And so you have a bright future. And I know, I am convinced that because of your story, your past, you'll not only be great men in the marketplace, but you'll be great men of God. Good. Yeah. So Good. move on with life. Yes. Uh, hold your head up high. Yes. And... Uh, the best is yet to come. Yeah. yeah. Now talk to Susan. Yes. <laughs> wow. Dear Susan. Dear Susan. Yes. That's a tough one. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So dear Susan, um, the new season of your life has just begun and uh, you're blessed and your destiny is blessed. And um, this is the season where God will show himself strong and all the pain is now beginning to make sense mm -hmm. and all the tests are now testimonies and all for the glory of God. Yes, yeah. all the tests yeah. are now all testimonies, testimonies yeah. and all for the glory yeah. of God. Yeah. You know I love this interview yeah. because I know this is not the last time our yes. audience are going to be seeing you. Yeah. When we were doing our pre-interview, I mentioned that it would be amazing for you to come uh, even as a lean googie partner. Yeah. Now when I say that, I feel like I'm an advocate myself, <laughs> yeah. a partner yeah. or a lean googie show yeah. so that you are also able to advise yeah. our audience yeah. matters, child custody, yeah. family related matters yeah. and anything that you think would add value to yeah. this show. What are some of the things yeah. that you think you can help our audience tackle okay good i think um, yeah. just to navigate even when you're still in a difficult marriage mm -hmm. i would say in the years i've helped people th rethink divorce yes. so you divorce is not the first option their clients have lost because yeah. i realize they are not ready mm. to let go of the marriage so let's rethink and I'm not saying stay in an abusive situation, but you can rethink your marriage. So that's number one. Can yes. we salvage them? I am pro-marriage. And I'm hoping that we can save one marriage after another. Mm. I'm also hoping to engage those who want to get married. Remember what I did before I got married. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so we can engage and see, are you really ready for marriage? Are you getting into the right marriage? For convenience. Yes, and so by the way, I get once in a while when God gives me the opportunity, I'm able to have a small section in a bridal shower. Mm. As you learn the styles that you're supposed to do there, mm. I learn a few things about the family law and a few pitfalls. If you step here, you'll fall. I, I do go to bridal showers to give a small segment yes. of advice mm. on how we should take care of marriage. Mm. Remember I've been in marriage and now I'm out. Yeah. So you know I better. know both sides. You know both sides. Yeah. So mm. those th that then also custody mm. and then also to uh, now at least I can see how the courts are handling the cases. Yeah. I can advise I'm handling the cases as well, mm. seeing how divorce cases are handled, mm. I'll advise. And then also I can be able to advise you a bit on how to parent children like mine. Mm. How do you parent? How do you build up? Which things should you never tell your kids? Maybe things I've told my kids and they, it didn't work well. Mm. So from my mistakes, I can be able to advise yes. children who are, are living in two homes what mm. is what are good practices mm -hmm. okay maybe other areas of the law yes 
people, some you know, succession cases and all those. Yeah. Yeah, because my <coughs> main practice is in family law. I do yeah. everything else. Yes. But my main practice is in family law. Mm. I also have been trained to do mediation in through FIDA, mm -hmm. and so maybe to reconcile families. Mm. You've been left for an inheritance. Why do you need to fight about it? Why? This is not something that you 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 you, you, yeah. you had any input possibly. Mm, mm. Sit together and agree. You know, instead yes. of enriching us as lawyers and and cases stay in the courts for years, mm. I could try and yeah. bring people together yeah. and let them see that when they do things as yes. a family it's better it's better yeah it's more beneficial yes yeah and even now as we wait to see more of you on our show yes if people would want to get in touch with you yeah. how can people reach you okay let me give my uh number yes. i think it's okay that's okay with yeah, you it's yes okay. please yeah so uh zero seven two two seven three four two two eight my email address is skagwe 36 at gmail.com okay yeah so i serve in church yes. so i am not available on the weekend at mm -hmm. least from around 11 uh, o'clock on saturday yeah so somebody can call me on the weekend and mm -hmm. say this wakili doesn't pick their call yes on the weekend i'm not available yeah. sunday is my day, it's I, your day. in in church so yes. i don't pick phones yeah. So weekdays are fine. Okay. Anytime between eight and five. Yeah. And yeah. even if they don't get hold of you, yeah, they, can they can leave you a can, message. They can leave me a message. Yeah. I can, I'll do my best. You know, I'm also a human being. Mm. I have other things I'm doing. Mm. So I can do what I can do. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, what would be your parting shot to our audience? Wow. I think one is no God. No, get to know, not to know of God, but no God. <laughs> because... Honestly, I am a product yes. of the grace of God and getting to know him daily. Get close to him. Mm. Everybody has their own experience of life. Me, my experience of life has been God has upheld me. Not family, not friends, not a boyfriend, not a mm. husband. Mm. God, or not riches. Yes. God has upheld me. Yeah. And then love yourself, accept yourself, forgive yourself. Mm. Forgive yourself. That's one of the things that I'm still doing. Forgive yourself yeah. and then have hope. Have hope. In God and in the future. Yes. Because if, if you're still alive today and mm. you're watching this video, mm. it means that God has a plan for your he, life. And he has a reason and for it. it. Yeah, and it means there is something you can do. Don't look around you and see, the, uh, I'm, now I'm destroyed, yes. everything is destroyed. No, there is something you mm. can do. Mm. Look at what is in your hands. Look at what is in around, around you, use it, do something, mm. start small. Lynn, I left a big mansion, I went into a two bedroom house, or a one bedroom house. Mm. We piled things in, into that house, one on top of the other. Mm. And I started from there. So you can start from anywhere, and you will end up somewhere beautiful. beautiful. And then I want to say, because I noticed that something I may have done a bit, mm -hmm. is that when your marriage ends, it's very easy to get into unhealthy relationships. As a woman, take time. Not every person who comes smiling to you is the person for you. Because mm. you may want to rush very fast yes. into another relationship to cover the pain of the past. Mm. Take your time. We call them rebounds. Rebounds. Yes. Take your time. They destroy. They destroy. Yeah. Take yeah. your time. Yes. And... Uh, be focused. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Advocate Susan Kagwe. Yes. <laughs> it feels good to say that on the show. Yeah. Thank I you so go. much for yes. blessing us with your story. Yeah. For being very vulnerable yeah. and for being very authentic with your story. Yeah. I think God is fulfilling all his promises for this year. Mm. Uh, because as I told you, even as we were meeting for the pre-interview, mm. I'm very intentional with healing and restoring, especially mm. for this year. Mm. I want us to give our stories, but I I also want people to be healed mm. and I want people to be restored mm. and I want us to add value to our audience mm. and thank you for accepting to be a partner yes. of our show yeah. especially matters family law yeah. looking forward to yes. tackling a copy a couple of topics with you yeah. yeah our construction guys have started so we have to wind up thank you so much for watching and for tuning in and I want to know on the comment section what are some of the things that you think 
we need to tackle here on the show and what's the greatest lesson you have learned from Susan's story what things are you telling yourself what are people saying about you and what are you telling yourself because right now she said something amazing she knows she's beautiful she's gorgeous she is intelligent you cannot let people put labels on you because you have got to know who you are and half of knowing who you are is knowing who you are not I encourage people to come out and share their stories people might think there is shame in it but there isn't and as you can see even on the comment section a lot of people are going to be touched by this episode and those are people who are just waiting for you to come out mm. and speak so that you could pave way for them mm. to share their stories mm. yeah to my amazing team that does amaz this job thank you so much uh, the legendary director and camera person Edwin Ocheng thank you for everything you do here on the show and our amazing editor David Moravi for compiling this episode and making sure it reaches you right on time our associate producer and mentor Saveli Barashkov Asante Sana for all the time you take to just mentor us and make sure that all we are doing in this life is giving people content that has the ability to impact their lives oh our partners at elegance if you love my white dress their contact details are right here you love it Susan yes I it's do. nice you yeah. know I've been trying to sit like this because I don't want to show them the slit because it has like a slit but if they love they can just uh, order the address here uh, the details are here on the screen and if you want to share your story with me my email is right here on the screen send a summary of your story and who knows we could be sitting with you next on the lean googie show what we are stood thank you for this amazing space my name is lynn googie till next time bye bye yeah.